to be the seed that germinated into the prolonged struggle that gave birth to the democracy we currently enjoyed since 1999. And rise surprised in that historic election, the substantial number of our people who participated in the struggle to annul the election signified their fierce commitment to enthroning democracy as a form of government that best ennobles the liberty, the dignity of individual and integrity, as well as the stability of the polity. The fierce opposition to the announcement of June 12, 1993 presidential election and unrelenting pro-democracy onslaught, it unleashed was the equivalent of the battle against colonial rule by our founding fathers that resulted in the gaining of Nigerian independence in 1960. Just like the anti-colonial movement, the pro-democracy June 12 vanguard demonstrated once again the enduring validity of the 19th century historian Arnold Tosby's eternal postulation that civilization and society experience progress as they are forced to respond to challenges posed by the environment. The unjust annulment of a widely acknowledged free and fair election was a challenge that elicited resistance by a resurgent civil society, leading ultimately to the attainment of our second independence, as exemplified by the return of democratic governance in 1999. Fellow compatriots, we celebrate a day that has remained a watershed in our nation's history, not just today, but for every June 12, for the endless future that our beloved country shall exist and work stronger and stronger. Generation of Nigerians will always remember themselves that the democracy that is steadily going to become the divining essence of our polity was not gifted to us on a silver platter. We can easily recall the sacrifice and the martyrdom of Chief M.K. Abiola, the custodian of the sacred mandate that was so cruelly announced. He sacrificed his life in unyielding patriotic defense of the ideals of democracy as symbolized in his choice by his fellow countrymen and women as their duly elected president. There was an easier choice for him. It was to forgo the justice of his course and opt for the path of ease and capitulation in the face of the tyranny of power. To his eternal credit and immortal glory, Abella said no. He demonstrated the time-tested eternal truth that there are certain ideals and principles that are far more valuable than life itself. Every day on this day, down the ages, we will recall the several heroes of democracy, such as Kudrat Abiola, wife of Chief Abiola, who was brutally murdered while in the trenches fighting on the side of the people. We remember Pat Al Fedrewani, one of the heroes of our independent struggle, and Major General Sheikh Musaya Adua retired, who was silenced by the military junta while in pursuit of democracy. 
They gave their yesterday for the liberty that is ours today. The point is that we must never take this democracy for granted. We must forever jealously guard and protect it like a precious jewel. For a people can never truly appreciate the freedom and the right democracy guarantees them until they lose it. We have transferred the dark, thorning part of dictatorship before, and those who experience it can readily testify to the unbridgeable gap between the dignity of freedom and the humiliation and degradation of tyranny. True, yes, rancorous debates, interminable wrangling, ceaseless quarrels, built electoral contestations may be perceived by some as the unattractive feature of democracy, but they also testify to its merits and value. This year, we held the seventh in the cycle of elections that have become sacred ritual of our democratic practice in this dispensation since 1999. That the polls were intensely contested is in itself positive evidence that democracy is well and alive in our land. It is only natural that even as those who won and experienced victory in various elections are elated and fulfilled, those who lost are disenchanted and disappointed. But the beauty of democracy is that those who win today can lose tomorrow. And those who lose today will have an opportunity to compete and win in the next rounds of elections. Those who cannot endure and accept the pains of defeat in elections do not deserve the joy of victory when it is their turn to triumph. Above all, those who disagree with the outcome of the elections are taking full advantage of the constitutional provisions to seek redress in court. That is one of the reasons why democracy is the best form of government invented by man. For Chief M.K. Abiola, the symbol of this day, in whose memory June 12 became a national holiday, democracy is eternal. It is about rule of law and vibrant judiciary that can be trusted to deliver justice and strengthen institutions. It has become imperative to state here that the unnecessary illegal orders issued to truncate or abridge democracy will no longer be tolerated. The recent harmonization of the retirement age of the judicial officers is meant to strengthen the rule of law, which is critical pillar of democracy. The reform has just started. The democracy that will yield right dividends to the people who are shareholders means more than just freedom of choice and right to get people into elective offices. It means social and economic justice for our people. To the winner of June 12 democracy offers the best chance to fight and eliminate poverty. 30 years ago, he christened his campaign manifesto, Farewell to Poverty, because he was convinced that there is nothing defined about poverty. It is a man-made problem that can be eliminated with clearly thought out social and economic policies. It is for this reason 
that in my inauguration address on May 29, I gave effect to the decision taken by my predecessor in office to remove the fuel subsidy, the abatros, and the free up the collective use of much needed resources, which had hitherto been pocketed by a few rich. I admit the decision will impose extra body on the masses of our people. I feel your pain. This is one decision we must be able to save our country from going under and take our resources away from the stranglehold of a few unpatriotic elements. Painfully, I have asked you, my compatriots, to sacrifice a little more for the survival of our country for your trust and belief in us, I assure you that your sacrifice shall not be in vain. The government I lead will repay you through massive investment in transportation, infrastructure, education, regular power supply, healthcare, and other public utilities that will improve the quality of lives. The democracy MK Abiola died for is one that promotes the welfare of the people over personal interests of the ruling class and one where the governed can find personal fulfillment and happiness. That is the hope MK Abiola ignited throughout our country in 1993. On this year's Democracy Day, I enjoy all, all of us, to rededicate ourselves to strengthening this form of government of free people that has been our guiding light these past 24 years. In particular, those of us who have been privileged to elect into public office at various levels in both the executive and legislative arms of government, must recommit ourselves to offering selfless service to the people and delivering concrete democracy dividend in accordance with our electoral promises. On my part and that of my administration, I pledge anew our commitment to diligently fulfilling every component of our electoral pact with the people, the Renew Hope Agenda. We shall be faithful to truth, faithful to equity, and faithful to justice. We shall exercise our authority and mandate to govern with fairness, respect, for the rule of law and commitment to always upholding the dignity of all our people. On this note, I wish us a happy Democracy Day celebration and pray that the light of liberty shall never be extinguished in our land. Thank you all, and may God continue to bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Thank you.